Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this episode I will be building a virtual server on a Dell PowerEdge T710 that will be running VMware ESXi 6.7.0. This video is part of my video series on building an enterprise network. Um, I am building this in a lab so it's not a, exactly a one for one uh, but it's as close as I can get with the equipment that I have on hand. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe, like, and comment. So right now we're looking at the RAID configuration on our Dell PowerEdge T710 server. So we're going to hit F2 to go into operations. We're going to create a new VD. Uh, I chose RAID 5 so we can maximize the available disks. I would not normally choose this in a production environment, but since this is only a lab, uh, I care more about uh, space than I do performance. Uh, so we're going to call this data store 1. Advanced, we're going to initialize and click OK and wait for it to finish initializing. Um, we are not going to initialize these 900 gig disks. Uh, they are very old um, and I think two or three of them have already failed. So we're gonna leave those as they are. And we're going to escape and reboot the server. So I'm going to um, fast forward uh, until we get to the VMware ESXi configuration. All right, so we are back and we're going to select our uh, USB drive and we're going to install ESXi 6.7.0. And again, I'll fast forward through this and come back once the installer is ready. All right, and so now let's start the install. So we're going to hit enter. Uh, we're supposed to read through our uh, enterprise li or end user license agreement. 
And once we do, hit accept. All right, so we're gonna select the RAID controller, uh, US defaults. Uh, we're gonna put in a temporary password. So it's gonna give us a warning that uh, our um, CPU will eventually um, not be supported, um, but it works as of now so we'll continue and we'll hit f11 to install All right, so our install is complete. So we'll log in. And set up the initial networking. So we're gonna go down to configure network. Uh, we're gonna configure network adapters. And we're gonna hit okay. So for management, we'll dedicate the first two interfaces. Uh, we'll set these up as a trunk, in which case we'll put this on VLAN 51. And then we'll set an IP address manually. So we'll set up 10, 0, 51 to 11 with the default subnet of uh, 255.255.255.0 and a default gateway of 10, 0, 51.1. And 
then we will disable IPv6. And then we'll set up our DNS. So initially we'll set it to 8.8.8.8.8.8.4.4. And again, we'll be changing this um, as after we build the first domain controller. So we're going to give it a host name of HQVH1, virtual host 1. And we'll give it a suffix of sec network.org. And we'll hit escape to commit these changes. We'll hit yes, and the server will need to reboot. And we will be back as soon as the server comes back up. All right, so while we're waiting for the server to reboot, we're going to go in and start configuring the switch. So let's open up PuTTY. And let me bring this over. And then we'll log in. And then we go grab the password from our password database. All right. So what we'll do is do a show run interface, I'm sorry, show interface status. And as you can see, the bulk of the interfaces are still shut down, shut down disabled. Um, and what we'll do Bring up my notes. Uh, we're going to go into configure T. We're going to do interface gig 1029. Uh, actually, before we do that, we're going to range gig 1029 through 34. And we're going to do a description of hqvh1-trunk. And then we'll do switch port trunk native VLAN 5. Switch port mode trunk. And then we'll do spanning tree port fast trunk. And no shutdown. So let's take a quick look at our configuration. Show run 90 gig 29. So we rerun that range command. And then we'll do <coughs> no switch port access VLAN 999. And that should be good. Let's just double check. All right, that looks good. Uh, later on, uh, I will probably limit the VLANs that can go through the trunk, but as I'm building this out, I didn't want to limit it. Um, so that'll probably come up in a later video. Um, so let me do show interface status. And we can see our six interfaces are connected and at a gig. So we can write our configuration and exit. So let's check on the status of the server.
and the server is still rebooting all right so while we're still waiting let's jump into the firewall and so from in order for our management laptop to access the server we're gonna have to create a temporary firewall rule and the rule we're gonna create is gonna be TMP for temp um, from management laptop to the uh, HQVH1 this is not going to be a universal rule this is going to be interzone rule our source is going to be our management network because that's what the management laptop is currently connected um, and we're going to create a new host and we're going to call it hqvh1.secnetwork.org and we're going to say 10.0.51 to 11 for the IP address jump over to uh, destination oh, sorry actually let's get rid of that and for this we're going to do 10.0.11.10 and then we're jumping over to destination and we will do to our server network and we'll pick VH1 and for now we'll leave everything open uh, application defaults are fine click OK and then we will com commit our changes and our server is now back online and And I'm going to run a quick ping while we're waiting for while we're waiting for this rule to commit. All right, so now we can reach our server, so we can kill this, and we can close this. And so now if we type in 10, uh, 51, uh, 2, 11, and we will proceed. We're gonna type R using this root. And now we have successfully logged in. Uh, so we're going to do some quick post configuration. Um, so first thing I want to do is jump over to the management tab and reset our user account password. And we're going to grab that password from our database. save all right so next up we're going to jump over to our networking tab and we're going to remove the default VM network port group remove didn't look like it took remove remove 
Okay, um, and so now what we're gonna do is create a new switch. Um, for now, we're gonna create a standard switch and call it sec net. Uh, and then we'll pick uh, four and five. So for security, we're going to allow the MAC address changes and forge transmits. And we'll leave the defaults. And then we're going to add an uplink. So we're going to add five and save. And I do believe we have to change the teaming. Oh, nope, they're both active. All right, so that's good. Now, let me just check switch uh, uh, vSwitch zero and make sure that both necks are also, yeah, so this one's standby so now they're both active all right so we're good there and so what we're going to do now is create all of our required port groups so i'm going to speed up the video during this process All right, so we have our uh, four main networks, um, our member server network, our security network, our DMZ, and our uh, AAA for authentication, accounting, and authorization. We're going to delete, I'm sorry, not delete, we're gonna rename uh, our data store here and what I usually do is call it the host name so hqvh hqvh1 underscore data store data store one all right and we should be good on that and so at this point, we would be good to start creating uh, virtual machines. So this concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.